You are listening to the Uncanceled Podcast. We believe that Jesus came to set you free and nothing can cancel the truth of God's word. Now here's your host, the youth pastor of Impact Youth at Faith Church in New Milford, Connecticut, Pastor Joey Santora. What is going on, Uncanceled? How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for tuning in. Come on now, I held it. We got Grace, we got Ben. Grace, say what's up. What's up? Happy to be here. Oh, yeah. She's here, and she's here today because we're getting ready because we went back to 203 Exotics, and we got some snacks that we We are are ready to try. We got some good snacks, man. So you know what that means. It is now time to rate Rate that that banana milk. Oh, you Oh, yeah, Yeah. baby. I knew it. Oh, yeah. I knew it. I was going to say something, but whatever. How did you know it? Oh, because we're past it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bro, we're going to try to go get cups. Oh, oh, did you, did you, did you need some cups? Oh, no. no, He's been planning this. this. He's been planning this. This guy. We, we, uh, so. Uh, I just don't like what we're doing here today. So. I already cannot think of one single good thing about this. So we actually did go to 203 Exotics and get more snacks. We have a ton of crazy stuff. I mean, you got to tune in every single week to see what type of snacks that we have. All the all right? good stuff in like, here. It, it's really good. Oh, it's it's really fun. cool. I'm excited. But this week, we're trying some banana milk. Uh, this is This is from... Some this, country that's this is like not going to be good is what it is. Uh, see, I'm more optimistic. Question. What is it like milk flavored by banana, or is it like one of those like they tried to like milk a banana? M- <laughs> they did not milk a banana. It's but do you it's know like, what I'm saying? You know how they it's make banana like, oat flavored milk, milk and everything. They like you know what I'm no, saying? No, no, no. It's banana flavored milk. <laughs> it's banana flavored milk. Uh, if I had to guess, it's it's from an Asian country. It's either China or Japan or, you know, li- like one of those. Um, it, like Maybe I could pull it up real quick. Uh, banana milk country of origin. Um, Korea. Korea. Wait, hold on. Wait. Oh, wait. I, they might actually have milked a banana. In the 1970s, there were issues of malnutrition in Korea. I expected it to be a little yellow. Yeah. Malnutrition. I I mean, that's probably good, honestly, that's not yellow because banana doesn't become yellow when you blend it. Right. It's like that that that's that's more of a banana color right there. Uh it it says as a response, the government requested Koreans to drink more milk. Unfortunately, the people of Korea were not filled with, uh, were not thrilled with its plain milk taste. In 1974, banana milk was created by the company. I don't know what that is, and it's now a beloved drink for many. I'm excited. This is great. But here's a little bit of context right here. Here's a little bit of con- a context. Are you grabbing a bucket in case we have time? Oh, out. thank you. Here's a little bit of context. Ben and Grace hate banana. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's not true. Grace hate, hates banana. Give me I one hate of those. banana flavored things. I can eat a banana. What I if there's real banana, banana in it? What if it's real banana milk? I I typically don't enjoy liquefied banana stuff. Okay. I, See, so you don't so he's just not a real big I banana guy. I just genuinely hate everything about love. a banana. I can't think of one good thing about a banana. Oh. I don't like the taste, I don't like the look, it's, I don't like the smell, I don't like the well, texture. There's nothing good about a banana. You can't convince me otherwise. This so, might be potassium. my new favorite thing. No. I, potassium. Get it from somewhere else. This may be my new banana. favorite Disgusting. thing. This is like kind of like a banana milkshake but like Did you thinner. you already try it? No, no I can no, smell, smell it. it. Oh. Oh. Oh, I love banana, man. I love banana flavored things. This like thing. I, I'm. I, it's not fair to say that I'm not a banana guy. I like bananas. I just don't like the flavoring. But you don't like blended banana. Like if I put a banana in a blender, you're not gonna you're not gonna like it. No. See, is it, this is just not a real big. He he likes bananas, but like not like. I like not them properly. Just one way. Not properly. What do you mean properly? Banana ice cream is delicious too. Okay, no. we should just get There's this done. All right, done. let's uh, let's do this. Let's not get this over with. Let's enjoy every sip and every single taste. I All right, here we go. Let's go. You can just spit it right back into the cup. Please don't spit it out on 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 uh, Freddie the Flamingo. Okay, here we go. Three. Oh, he already did it. I already Two. tried it, man. Oh. oh, that's bad. Oh, that is terrible. 
That is one of the worst things I've ever tasted in my oh, life. Oh, that's oh really bad. <laughs> Ready, guys? Ready, Ben? Do it with me. Ready? Three, two, one. Zero. No. Oh. It was a oh, no. That was no. Disgusting. no. It tastes like medicine. Oh, no. Like, guys, really, foul. That's. Oh. Who? I want to know who enjoys that. They said it's beloved that by was many. A red. Beloved by many? Beloved who? by many who? Who? That's what it said on your thing you looked up. I want to know oh, one person. No. I want to know one Absolutely person that not. enjoys this. Okay, okay. He hear me out here. You guys all heard our tones before this. Grace hates banana. Hate. Ben is like somewhere in the hate. middle between me and Grace. I think that's fair. I really like banana. But we all hate this. And this is disgusting. No. No. It's just a no. It's not even like it doesn't. It's a it's a zero. It's an it's a, actual it's a zero. zero because no. I would never even want to put my mouth on that before uh, again. This is it, just terrible. Can you give like negative? It's in the negatives. It's oh man! And there's like a foul aftertaste as well. I'm still at it. Oh no! Oh no! I don't no. even know how to really describe it. Yogurty Besides, a little bit. Yeah, sure. A not yogurt-y. even. Not even. It's like too like, like sour. That's what I mean by that. Are like you getting any kind of like coconut milk? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm getting. Thank it you. might have Thank coconut you. milk. I appreciate in it. that. Does it say anywhere in English like anything? No. No. <laughs> it's from Korea. Not apparently. Not one word. Wait. Coca Cola Company. Co- <laughs> Coke. No. <laughs> stick to stick to soda. Ben doesn't even like soda, and he's like, or he does like soda. He just doesn't drink it. But I'd like, rather drink soda than this. All right, wow. so Ben, if I laid before you this no, milk, I would, still, I would still drink this. You would still really? drink that. Really? Oh man, my streak. Oh man. man, guys, there's so many fun sodas that Ben can't try because he doesn't like to drink soda, or does he? He doesn't want to. He has a streak. It's a whole thing. It's like eight years. But this is really like stunned me today. I was excited to try this. this. The, the the smell. The smell is just straight banana. Yeah. Right. The smell gets you excited if you're if you like banana, but the taste is just. I need to figure foul. out. Foul. I'll give one of you. Go- oh, she went back for a second. Oh no. Oh no. The, the only thing that I could think is like Honestly, I didn't shake it. I don't like it, but the second try was better. I'll try. A like second let one. it like marinate for a second. Ew. <laughs> All right, I'll try a second. I'm going to need two witnesses before I take a second sip. Okay, that's enough for me. I'm not. I didn't say it was good. Grace. But I think the initial shock okay. was okay. gone. Hear me out on this. That's Here's what it what was. what this tastes like. It tastes like I went and went to the beach and tasted my sunscreen and, like, put, like, half a banana in yes. my mouth at the same time. Yes. That's what it tastes like, like a bana- yes. banana-covered sunscreen. That's terrible. That's just not something you should drink. No, it's not. I love banana, guys. But if you're a banana lover, like, I mean, if you don't want to take my word for it, go try it at 203 I Exotics at the Danbury Mall. But it's it's a zero for me. I see zero. what you're saying about that, like, sour taste to oh. it, too. It's like oh. if somebody, like, I feel like it's just, like, a cup of, like, some sort of, like, sour liquid. And you know that joke about, like, LaCroix where people are, like, it's like somebody stood in the other room and, like, shouted banana? That's what I'm getting from this. So you like you think about a banana, but it's just sour grossness. See, I don't know idea what you're talking about, but okay, I, I, I like I'm just somebody's zero. gonna know what I'm talking about. Would you hopefully. go with a zero still, Grace, or would you up it after your second? No. Yeah, I feel like she's gonna give it a point. No, no, I like no. I wanted to give it a chance to be able to say something about it, but like both times were just terrible. Okay, okay. I want to be clear. So I gross. went in with an open mind. Like more than I would say these two when it was an open mind. I would even say mind. that you went in with a bias that you wanted it to be good. I, yeah. I 100% agree with that. I, I was biased that I wanted it he to be good. He was really excited and it's about a zero. this. And it's a zero for me. That That's is saying ridiculous. something. I think this is our first skunker across the board. P-U. I do like the happy little cow on it. I do too. I wish it tasted good. I know. Maybe this Look at like so happy. He's so happy taking his nice, no, little, his nice little nap or whatever like he's doing. But strawberry milk. Yeah, this is just not good, guys. Very uh, bad. Not yeah. good. Uh, not go good get time. something else at 203 Exotics. Or if you want to make your friends throw up, like, you know, buy them some banana milk. Maybe we should use this for, like, a youth game. Oh, but my that gosh. That could be fun. Yeah, keep the you bottle. Yeah, keep the bottle. Keep keep the bottle. Actually, I think that we you might. You might see this soon. You might see this soon. Uh, I might just be, like, five bucks to whoever can chug this banana milk because it's so bad. Oh, it's worth, like, 50 bucks. 
It's really big boys. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Uh, Grace, Grace, one of our great youth leaders joining us today. Uh, it was a privilege. It was a privilege to have you on. Um, but today, anyways, that went a really long time, but like, I hope you guys appreciated the, uh, the reaction from everybody. Uh, today we, we've been talking about divine healing and, uh, this is a topic that I really in Bible college was enthralled with in a lot of ways. And what I mean by that is like, I was very interested to find out the truth concerning divine healing. And so I've done teachings the last two weeks. We talked about, uh, you know, understanding divine healing. We talked about receiving divine healing and how we can do that in our lives. But today I want to talk to you about hindrances to divine healing, hindrances to divine healing. I think this will be the last week uh, of our teachings on divine healing, but I really have dedicated time in my life to talk about uh, with uh, people, to uh, talk about with people that I trust that know the word of God and to study the word of God for myself, which is the most important thing about what the Bible says to, concerning divine healing. And I cannot get past the fact that the Bible teaches that it is the will of God to heal and that healing has been atoned for. I can't get past it. You know, I can't get past it. And it's either this, hear me out on this, and obviously I believe that it's going to be the latter of these two. Either God's word is not true or divine healing is, uh, is the will of God and it's for today. Like those are the only two conclusions that I can arrive at. I can't get to the conclusion that divine healing is not the will of God. I can't get to the conclusion that divine healing has not been atoned for. I can't get to it in the scripture. Even if I tried to, it would be difficult with the knowledge that I have now and the understanding that I have in the word of God to dismiss what the word of God says concerning divine healing. This is not me necessarily even just wanting it to be this conclusion. It is simply what it is that the Bible teaches that divine healing, that healing has been atoned for, that healing has been paid for by Jesus Christ in the atonement. I believe that full, uh, full heartedly, but I do believe that there could be hindrances to people receiving divine healing. And I think that the Bible even teaches that. I have today for you six uh, hindrances to divine healing that I want to share with you today. And I derived uh, some of these from Kenneth Hagin's book, Seven Hindrances to Divine Healing. Uh, I uh, only put six down for today. Um, but you can read that book, and, and some of them are derived from, but not necessarily the points that he's making from the book. I'm kind of just taking some of the concepts that he addresses and making them into some points of hindrances. I don't claim this to be an exhaustive list in the sense that, you know, it has to be one of these things, but I do see that it could be one of these six things why, why somebody does not receive divine healing. My first uh, point uh, for a hindrance to divine healing is knowledge of God's word. We talked about this last week uh, a little bit. I touched on this. And if you haven't watched the first two teachings on divine healing, I'd encourage you to go back and watch those either, either after this or before this. But knowledge of God's word, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish because of a lack of of knowledge because of a lack of knowledge God's people perished because of a lack of knowledge sometimes people perish because they don't understand something because they don't have a knowledge of something I believe that one of the main hindrances to divine healing can be somebody not having an understanding of divine healing somebody not understanding what the Bible says concerning healing and again, I touched on this last week, but I wanted to add to it with this scripture. If you want to turn with me to Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, and I opened my Bible backwards. Mark chapter 9. I saw this today, and I thought it was interesting. Mark chapter 9, verse 22. This is a man speaking to Jesus. He's uh, worried about uh, his son who has a uh, demon spirit. And it says in verse 22, and often he has thrown him both into the fire, speaking of the demon, and the water to destroy him. So the demon spirit was literally trying to destroy or kill this boy. But if you can do anything, but if you can do anything, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. That's what the man says to Jesus. If you can do anything, if you can do anything, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. 
And uh, what's it called? I actually prefer uh, the NLT translation of this. And Jesus even says, what do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can? Uh, The New King James Bible, and this is a whole separate uh, discussion. The New King James Bible, sometimes it gets it right on certain things, but it is a... uh, it is a newer translation. And what I mean by that is you mean, what do you mean it's a newer translation? It's been around the longest. Yes, it's been around the longest. And that's why sometimes it does get some things right, but it uses a manuscript or a text that is further removed from the original uh, transcripts of the Bible. It uses something called the Textus Receptus, which is uh, further removed from the original documents of the Bible whereas something like an NIV or an ESV would use manuscripts that are much older and closer to the original translation of the Bible that we have. Again, whole separate different topic, just something I was touching on real quick, not related to divine healing in in this sense, but something I thought I'd mention. I don't have my other Bible with me. I left it in Pennsylvania. It's being shipped to me. It will be here soon, but I'm using this new King James Bible today. But Jesus says, In other translations, he says, what do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can? And I actually want to pull that up for you right now because I think it might be important for me to to show you what I'm talking about. Jesus says here, what do you mean if I can? Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believes. What do you mean if I can? Jesus was correcting this person's understanding about himself. What do you mean if I can? This man's lack of knowledge was causing a mental block where he was saying, well, if you can do something about it, Jesus is saying, no, 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 I can do this. I can do this. Now, we have to understand that this person didn't have the word of God, the New Testament before him. He had the Old Testament that he could have uh, gone to. He didn't have the New Testament. And so he didn't have a revelation on who Christ was and such. So Jesus is giving him the proper understanding to be able to receive. Uh, Brother Hagen, I, I talked about this. Brother Kenneth Hagen, great man of God, he taught uh, about a uh, man that he did not have understanding about divine healing and he didn't receive healing. And Brother Hagen says, Have you ever even heard of divine healing before? And, I, and I'm pretty sure I shared this story last week as well. And Brother Hagen said, I'm going to teach this man for a couple of weeks about divine healing, and then he's going to receive. And so he taught him for a couple of weeks on divine healing, or maybe it was like a couple months, a couple days. I'm not sure what the time period was, but he taught him on divine healing, gave him understanding, and then the man received because he had understanding. Sometimes it's a lack of knowledge that can hinder something for somebody from receiving divine healing. I've talked to Christians even, and I've said, you know that God can heal you? And they're like, God can heal me? Really? I thought that that was more just a thing of the Bible. Like, I didn't even realize that God can heal me. And then I teach them about it and share with them about it. And something happens in them. Faith gets stirred up in them and they receive divine healing. What happened? They got knowledge of God's word. Knowledge of God's word. So sometimes it could be a lack of knowledge that a person has on the topic of healing that could hinder them from uh, receiving divine healing. Uh, Second point, what else can hinder divine healing? This is a big one. Sin can hinder divine healing. Why? Because sin can, uh, sin can hinder us from receiving from the Lord. Sin can h- hinder us from receiving from the Lord. Go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 14. I actually want to go to Psalm 66, forgive me. Psalm 66. I know you guys just turned there. Nope. There we go. Psalm 66. This scripture might give you insight on what I'm talking about here with sin hindering prayer in our lives and hindering uh, our relationship with the Lord. Psalm 66, verse 18. It says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. Or in other words, if I have sin, the Lord will not hear me. In other words, sin causes 
a uh, sin causes a break between God and man. Sin can hinder our prayers when we're praying to God. Sin can cause problems where uh, our prayers are hindered. Now, somebody, I know what somebody's thinking right now. Maybe if you're an advanced Bible, well, that's the Old Testament. You know, maybe it's different now in the New Testament. Look at what First uh, Peter chapter three verse seven says. In this case, this is going to uh, address a specific sin. Uh, but it nonetheless is going to show the effects of sin in prayer. 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, speaking of wives, uh, them as wives, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. In this case, It's talking about the way that a husband may treat a wife, but it is addressing a specific sin. Sin will hinder your prayers to God. Sin will hinder our prayers. If we have sin in our life, and I'm not talking about, hear me out on this, I'm not talking about making a mistake and falling into sin. I'm not talking about that because we, you know, we've all sinned, fallen short of God's glorious standard, the Bible says. I'm not talking about when we go to God in repentance and do something wrong. I'm not saying that, you know, if I do something wrong today and then I repent before the Lord, that, that you know, my sin is going to stop me from having my prayers being answered. No, because I repented of that sin and I got right with God. I'm talking about sin where we do, when we're living in an action, where we're doing something something wrong and we're living in sin apart from God and then we go to God in prayer. If our first step is not to go to God in repentance, we're not dealing with the thing that God cares about the most. We're not dealing with the thing that is uh, that separates us from God, which is sin. So what we need to do when we go to God in prayer If we have sin in our life, we have to make sure that we address that. Now, this doesn't mean that every single time that you go to prayer that you have to try and search far and wide for the sin that you've committed in your life. But it does mean that we should be aware when we do wrongdoing that we should go before God and ask him for repentance or go to him in repentance and ask him for forgiveness. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we can go to God in repentance, ask him for forgiveness when we do wrongdoing and our prayers won't be hindered uh, any longer. But if we don't deal with the sin, the Bible seems to suggest to us that our prayers will be hindered. Now hear me on this. This is very important. Sometimes people will try to generalize and they'll say, well, you know, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, this person, that person didn't receive divine healing, so they must have been in sin. That is not for us to make that judgment. That is not for us to make that accusation in our lives. Even if it's an experience that you've had in your life where I had sin in my life and I repented of my sin and it healed me. That's great that that's what your story is, but that's not the same for everybody. We can't assume which of these things it is for an individual unless they outright tell us. If somebody were to say to me, yeah, I'm living in sin in my life, and you know, I'm pretty sure that's why I'm not receiving this prayer uh, answered from God, or this is why I'm not receiving divine healing. If someone tells you, you know, yeah, I'm living in sin, then okay, maybe you can make that inference or assumption, but it is not for us to just go around assuming what this person, that person, and the other person person is doing is the reason why they're not receiving divine healing. Especially we should not do it from a judgmental point of view where it's like, well, they're not receiving it because of this. If you think that's the reason why somebody's not receiving divine healing, as a brother and sister in the Lord, we should go to them and say, hey, listen, I know that you've been you know, uh, struggling with this sickness in your body. This is an ob- observation I-, I made, and I'm just coming to you so that I can help you in this situation and help you be able to receive divine healing. We can't just go around casting judgment upon people And looking from them afar, if we really care enough to try to figure out why somebody isn't receiving divine healing, do it with the person and try to help them. I'll tell you this too, it's not worth making an assumption about why somebody didn't receive divine healing if they died. Well, you know, they didn't receive divine healing because of this, this, and that. It's not worth making that assumption. If you're a family member and, you know, you're really trying to figure it out or something like that, you know, sure, maybe you might think about it a little bit or something like that. But we have to be careful about the things that we say to people and the things that we go out of our way to say, you know, well, this person didn't receive this because of that. That's not our place to make. We have to leave that between that person and the Lord. Hear me on that. Hear me on that. 
I've heard too many, oh, you know, they, they didn't receive divine healing because they were in sin, because they didn't have faith, because of this, this, and that. That is not our place to try to figure that out. What I'm presenting to you right now are reasonings why an individual may not receive divine, he, divine healing, but I'm not speaking to someone's specific situation. I'm talking about biblical reasons why divine healing may not be received. And this hopefully will make you, help you in your own life before you go and think about somebody else's life. But sin can cause us to not receive divine healing. Sin cannot, uh, can cause us to not receive divine healing because sin can uh, hinder our prayers being answered. And that's only two examples in the Bible of sin uh, hindering uh, prayers being answered, but there's many more. Knowledge of God's word, sin. Third, lack of faith. Now, again, this one can be abused where people think that everything is a lack of faith, but there is biblical precedence that a lack of faith can cause somebody to not receive divine healing. Number one, we see that Jesus constantly equates faith, to, uh, healing in someone's faith. We see it all throughout the Bible. We see Jesus equating it to the faith of a person believing on behalf of somebody else. We see Jesus equating to that person face of faith most commonly. Man, I just said face, faith. It's not someone's face. It's someone's faith. Amen. God wants what's inside, not on the outside. He doesn't want your face. He wants it. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going there. But faith, he equates it to somebody's faith. I know what someone might be thinking right now. Where is that in the Bible, that Jesus equates it to somebody's faith? Mark chapter 5. Jesus says, and you can go there if you'd like to. I'll say it to you right now. I believe that it is verse 34. Jesus says, daughter, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. There it is. Your faith has made you well. Jesus clearly equates the faith of an individual to receiving from him. We see this throughout the entire Bible, that faith is something that God responds to. Faith is something that God responds to. So if faith is something that God responds to, it is possible that an individual does not have faith to receive divine healing. Again, I'm not saying that's every instance, but I'm saying it is possible that somebody did not receive divine healing because they have a lack of faith. Because they didn't have a lack of faith, it's possible. Jesus even says to Jairus in, in Mark chapter 5, when his, uh, he gets word that his daughter died, he says to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. Again, there's that word faith. Jesus is equating faith to the miraculous. Here's where we see Jesus not doing something because of a lack of faith. Go to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. I hope this is help, helping some of you right now. And I understand again, and I'm very sensitive to this, that there are things that happen in our lives, sicknesses, loved ones have died and stuff. And by no means am I trying to say your loved one was a bad person if they didn't receive divine healing. That's not what I'm getting at right now. I'm specifically just focusing on what the word of God says can be hindrances to divine healing. Mark chapter six, verse five through six. Now he could do no mighty miracles there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in the circuit teaching. Jesus could do no mighty works there. Jesus could do no mighty works in, Na in Nazareth. Why? Because of their lack in faith. Now it does say that he laid his hands on a few sick people and, and healed them there. Now whether that was by the grace of God that Jesus still, you know, healed people or perhaps there were some among the crowd that still did have faith, even in a crowd of unbelief, some people could still have faith. I've seen this before. I've preached and there's a crowd of unbelief that I've preached before, before, but there are some in the crowd that I'm like, that person has faith though, and they receive from the Lord, but the crowd as a whole does not receive the way that God wants them to because of the lack of faith. I've seen this happen in my own ministry before. So possibly it could have been that, but the point is that Jesus could not do the mighty miracles that he wanted to do. Why? Because of the lack of faith. He says he marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. Unbelief is a cancer. It will, it will cause somebody to not receive what God wants for their life. And really and truly, two of the ones that really knock people out are sin and lack of faith. Those two really knock people out. Sin is like a cancer, man. It will kill. Sin, uh, uh, sin in your life will actually kill your faith. 
Sin in your life will actually kill your faith. There's a correlation between that. I've seen it so many times. People have such strong faith in the Lord. They start living in sin. I'm Again, I'm not talking about making a mistake and asking for forgiveness. I'm talking about uh, living a lifestyle of sin. I see many, 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 many people start to live a lifestyle of, of sin and it completely shipwrecks their faith. Their faith is nowhere where it was before. Every people start to notice a different spiritual leaders in their lives. Actually, I'm going to go here for a second. I feel this right now. If all the spiritual leaders in your life or the people that you look to for spiritual guidance when you were doing really well in your life, really strong in your faith, are telling you that there's something wrong in your faith and telling you that there's something different in your life right now, believe them. And trust them. Don't listen to the people that are not spiritual authorities and that are not strong in their spiritual faith to tell you how you're doing in your spiritual walk. Because here's the thing. If you start hanging out with people that are not at the same spiritual place that you're at, they're going to pull you down. But guess what? You're going to look like to them that you're doing really well because they're already so far down. Hear me on that. People are going to try and pull you down. They're going to try and pull you down. Don't go to people that you don't value as spiritual people to try to evaluate where you are at spiritually. It's a very foolish mistake. Don't be mistaken. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. Bad company corrupts good morals. You start to behave differently. You start to act differently. You start to not have the faith that you used to have. You're like, man, I used to have so much faith. Who are you hanging around? Who are you hanging around? Have you maybe changed your scene that you hang out at since your faith and your faith has gotten worse and worse ever since you started to change that scene? Oh my goodness, I see it time and time again and it kills me. It kills me to see people that have such a strong faith in God to do the miraculous, to do things in their life, just a faith in God in general to walk with him every single day. But man, does it kill me when I see people have the fulfillment of that scripture, bad company, corrupts good morals or good habits. It will destroy you. Sin will cause you to have a lack of faith in your life. Oftentimes those two go together, but not always, but oftentimes those two go together. Sometimes you maybe just don't have the faith for it as well. And you have to build your faith up. How do I build my faith up? Read the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, hearing the good news about Christ. Hearing the good news about Christ, some translations say hearing the good news about Christ. Some say faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Either way, you're hearing the good news about Christ or, you're, or the word of God, the same thing. Read the word of God. Get in the word. Let your faith be increased in your life. Let your faith be increased by reading the word of God, by listening to men and women of God speak the word of God. By having conversations with people that are strong spiritually, build up your faith by doing those things. That's how you can build up your faith. Hear me on this. Some people don't even want to be healed, and that's why they aren't healed. They're either comfortable where they're at, they're comfortable where they're at, and that's why they don't want, you know, that's why they don't want to receive divine healing. They're comfortable where they're at. Or sometimes people are ready to go home to be with the Lord. Here's the thing, though. In John 5, 6, Jesus asked the man at the pool of Bethesda, and you can, you can fact check me on this if you want to. Jesus asked the man at the pool of Bethesda, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? That's an important question. Does somebody want to be made well? Sometimes people are content where they're at. And this goes along with, and this could go along with a lack of faith as well. But sometimes simply people don't want to be made well. Sometimes people are like, yeah, I'm good. You know, whatever. I'll just kind of deal with what I'm going through. Guy told me one time at the altar, it's not my day. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm fine to kind of just keep dealing with this. He didn't receive healing that day. Many other people at the altar received healing, but he did not. Why? He said it himself. It wasn't his day. He wasn't ready to receive. Okay. A lack of faith can cause us to be uh, not receive divine healing. It's one of the hindrances. Knowledge of God's word, sin, lack of faith. Next, unforgiveness. 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 I'm actually going to stop right here and I'm going to continue with this next week. I have three more things about divine healing. Uh, 
three more hindrances. And my last one is really long. I'm going to deal with things like Paul's thorn and stuff like that. If you're interested in that type of stuff, people saying, you know, oh, well, you know, it's not the will of God uh, to heal all the time and everything. I'm going to deal with that next week in the second week of hindrances to divine healing. But I'm going to end it for this week. I hope that this helps some of you guys. Again, these are three of the six that I'm going to talk about. Knowledge of God's word, sin, and a lack of faith. Those are three major ones that we're going to deal with. And next week, we're going to deal with with maybe some more practical things and more intellectual things as well. Uh, but I hope that this teaching blessed you. I hope that it encouraged you that you can receive divine healing in your life. You can receive divine healing. Jesus is that good that he paid for our divine healing. Perhaps you're watching right now and you're saying that you want to receive divine healing in your body. If that's you right now, I encourage you to receive it. Pray for yourself. You can literally lay hands on yourself. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I receive my divine healing. And I believe that God can heal you and touch your body right where you're at. Let me pray for you guys right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person watching. Lord, I thank you that divine healing is available to every child of God. Lord, I thank you for helping us, Lord, when we are dealing with these hindrances to divine healing, helping us get out of them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for encouraging us with this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll be back next week with three more hindrances to divine healing. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening to the Uncanceled Podcast. We hope you were blessed and encouraged by the teaching today. If you are between the grades of 5th through 12th grade, make sure to check us out in person at Faith Church in New Milford, Connecticut every Wednesday night from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Be sure to tune in next week for another weekly podcast from Uncanceled. God bless. God bless.